Hello and welcome, in this video we are going to answer this question, what's the role of activity in Android? Experienced Android developers might think that this question is too trivial to spend time on, that it's only relevant for complete beginners, but actually as you will see in this video, there are quite a bit of nuance associated with activities and it's actually not that simple to just, you know, define what activity is in one sentence or two sentences. So we will start with kind of describing how we thought about activities at the very beginning of the Android era. So we had a phone, a device, and in this device, we wanted to show something on the user interface, on the UI. And then we launched apps, which resulted in, let's say, launching a specific activity, which then showed some user interface on the screen of that device. And then through navigation inside the app, we started another activity, and then that activity was displayed on the device, and we navigated to another screen and that activity was displayed on the device. And basically we had one activity for each individual screen of the application. And for a very long time, we kind of thought that activity represents one screen, apps screen. Okay, but then of course there was like complication because you could have one activity and when the app was launched, you would inflate one custom view, compound view inside this activity. And then on navigation and that navigation, you had to implement it manually by yourself, but then uh, some frameworks for navigation between views appeared. And then um, when you navigated to another screen, then basically the same activity remained on, on the screen, remained controlling the UI. And all you did was just replacing the view shown inside that activity. And then of course, navigating to another screen led to uh, view number three being shown, etc. And of course, a very similar approach was employed when Google rolled out fragments. And more recently, we use the same approach when we use Jetpack Compose. Basically, we use a single activity and replace composables inside that activity. And in that case, we could say that activity represents multiple application screens, potentially all the applications screens, right? And then the question becomes, so can we define activity as one or more applications screens? And to answer this question, well, before we answer it, before I share my opinion, I would like to show you a simple demonstration, short demonstration of something that not that many Android developers are aware of, and that will be how Android represents its user interface stack. So let's jump into Android Studio. And here I'm using one of the relatively recent additions to Android Studio, the ability to mirror uh, my device, my physical device, into this kind of emulator-ish style of user interface. So what you see on your screen is what I'm doing on my device. And this is my open source Techul Chance application. I'll post a link to this app in the description of this video so you could uh, clone it if you like. Here, for example, I have this foreground service demonstration. And when I attempt to start a foreground service, we get this permission prompt. And basically what it asks me is whether I want to allow this application to send notification. That's of course because uh, foreground services usually involve notification in the notification bar. All right, all of that is kind of standard, but here is a tricky question. How does Android represent this dialogue? What element exactly shows this dialogue that we see overlaying my application? Well, we can actually go and investigate that. So let's jump into shell. So here I will issue the following comment. ADB, and please ignore this XZ extension, that's just because I'm using Windows subsystem for uh, Linux, so it requires this XZ extension. So ADB shell dumpsys activity, activities, comment, and then I just, you know, redirect that to this dumpsys.txt file, and let's open it in my favorite text editor, which is, of course, Emacs. You can use whatever you want. I'm not advertising Emacs here. This file opens with <laughs> this title, Activity Manager Activities. So these are all the activities that Activity Manager, which is the service that manages activities for Android framework, is aware of. And it's organized in displays and then tasks. So we see that on display number zero, we have this task that corresponds to my main activity. See that? Main activity. But if you read carefully, it says last paused activity inside this task. So Inside this task, we have a post activity, which is main activity. And why is this activity post? Well, it's post because we have something in front of it. And when we have something in front of our activity, it might be post. So what exactly do we have in front of that activity? Well, let's just, as we have this last post activity, let's just 
look for top resumed activity here. And the top resumed activity here is this com Android permission control permission UI grant permissions activity. So the answer to the question, how does Android represent this dialogue is actually an activity. We have an entire screen taken up by an activity, uh, grant permission activity, and that activity, most of that activity is transparent. And that's why we can see this paused activity in the background, my own activity. And only this part, this dialogue is not transparent and we can interact with it. And this realization kind of undermines the idea that activity represents applications screen, because here we have activity representing kind of system dialogue that just overlays the screen of my application. But that's not all. So if I just don't allow, never mind, stop this foreground service, I don't want it. Here inside my technicians app, I also have this uh, ability to hide or show overlays. So basically this take your chance logo that you see right now is not part of this activity. It's not part of this um, screen of inside my application. It's actually an overlay that stays right there even if I navigate to the home screen. And the question that we might ask now is, well, how is this overlay implemented? Well, it turns out that we can get this information using ADB as well. So let's jump back into shell. And here I want to execute a very similar comment, but instead of doing dumpsys activity activities, I'm doing dumpsys window windows. And again, I redirect the output into this dumpsys txt. And if I open this file, we have window manager window. So beforehand we had activity manager activities. And I remind you activity manager is the service that manages activities. And now we have windows that window manager, which is the service as you might guess, that manages windows inside Android um, framework side, Android operating system basically knows about. What I would like to emphasize is the following. So let me do highlight regex and I want to highlight window and then number. And you might notice that the way this file is structured, you have window number zero, and then we have some information about this window, window number one, and some information about that window. And here I would like to search, for example, okay, let's just uh, highlight, I guess, one again. I want to search for activity. And you might notice that, for example, window number zero that corresponds to this screen decor overlay bottom. So what's that? Well, that's part of the system's user interface. And when we go here, we see that activity type is undefined for this specific window. And what that means is that this window presents user interface to the user without any activity. And of course, we can scroll down and see that window number one corresponds to screen decor overlay. So this one is the bottom part, and this is probably the central part. And again, activity type undefined. And you can just you know do this for yourself and just go through all these windows and see what they correspond to. For example, we have a window that corresponds to KGuard biometric toast view, right? And you might ask, well, why would we have this KeyGuard window uh, even when there is no KeyGuard on the screen? Well, it stays there, it just stays there. And that's very interesting to inspect for yourself. But what's even more interesting is that we have this window number 10 that corresponds to Take Your Chance Android. In this window, you know, might see that the type is application overlay. So that's the window, window number 10, that corresponds to this Take Your Chance label hovering over all other applications, including over the home screen of my device. And the reason why I can do that is, of course, because that's system alert window permission. That's what I ask for to show this specific overlay. But what's interesting here is that activity is undefined. And this shows you that you can actually show user interface without activities at all. And I could very well make this overlay full screen overlay. So you could interact with it, you could use it, and you wouldn't even know that you, you're not using activity. So again, complicates this picture of an activity being a screen inside the application because you can actually implement a screen inside your application without activity, right? And let me just show you something else interesting here. Just if we are here, already, you might notice that window number 13 corresponds to take your chance as well and corresponds to this main activity. So even though we are on the home screen and my application is in the background, we still have this window associated with main activity and you can expect this output. It's very interesting to at least once go through it and understand how Android represents its user interface stack. Amazing. Now let's get back to our presentation. So before I show you this demonstration, we ask whether 
it's the correct definition that activity is one or more of your application screen. And this demonstration hopefully convinced you that thinking about activities in terms of screens is actually non-optimal because you can have screens inside your application that have nothing to do with activities and you can have activities that do not correspond to full screens, even activities that do not correspond to your application like this uh, permission overlay, this permission dialog that we explored. And therefore, even though it's the most natural thing to think about activities as screens, and of course we have multi-window mode and we have um, picture-in-picture modes in Android more recently. So thinking about screens uh, when you think about activities is actually non-optimal. So what's that? Well, activity is actually a window controller. In that demonstration, you basically saw that Android represents its user interface stack as windows. And activity is one of the entities that can actually gain control over a window and decide what to do with it. It can display a full screen layout there. It can display a dialogue, it can display something, or it can display nothing. Maybe this window will be completely transcoolant and there will be no user interface associated with that activity. All of these uh, options are open for you. And the question that we should ask further is what's the most important aspect of being a window controller? If we would like to kind of define the most important functionality of an activity in Android, what's its main goal? Why we need activities? What would that be? And of course, the most straightforward and intuitive answer to this question would be to draw something on the screen, to draw the user interface, of course, because activities are UI components, UI elements. And that would be incorrect because that's not the main goal of activities. That's not the main feature. The main aspect of being an activity, the main aspect of being a window controller is to handle lifecycle. That's why we use activities. That's why we need activities. And the way to think about it is to imagine an activity that doesn't have any user interface, but you would still handle lifecycle. Lifecycle is the most fundamental feature of an activity in Android. And that's the most fundamental feature actually of a window controller, because even if you do not use activities, if you use something like a system overlay, like, like I demonstrated to you right now, you will still handle some aspects of the overall lifecycle, just different lifecycle for activities. And for example, overlays that we show from services, but still, if you are a window controller, you handle lifecycle. And that's the most important feature of an activity. And therefore activity in Android is a top level window controller. Its main function is integrating with the operating system through implementation of lifecycle methods. Now, please notice that activity is a top level window controller. So it controls an entire window and then it can delegate to lower level controllers, let's say fragments or views or composables to handle the actual user interface part. So activity doesn't even necessarily has to work with the user interface directly, it can just delegate the control over some portion of the window to let's say fragment and then fragment will draw the user interface. So again, thinking about activities in terms of user interfaces, in terms of screens, is kind of misleading and non-optimal because that's not the best mental model for you. Window controller is something different. Activity gains control over a window in Android and then whatever it decides to do with that window, well, it's up to that specific activity, up to you to implement this functionality. And the most important part that basically all activities will handle will be life cycles. And I'm not going to expand on what's life cycle uh, here because the question what is life cycle is uh, not less interesting than the question what is activity. And just like many developers would kind of jump to conclusion that they know what uh, an activity is, uh, many developers think that they know what life cycle is because well they use life cycles so they obviously know what a life cycle is but actually it's a very interesting question and i have another video when i actually covered this topic and we discussed what life cycle in android is so i will post a link in the description to this video so you could um, watch that if you're interested but we should not forget the fact that activity is also a context activity extends from context and that's a very unfortunate architectural deficiency of Android framework. Android authors made a huge mistake many years back then. And of course, there's no way to fix this mistake now because it's at the core of Android architecture now and it will require to refactor the entire framework to fix this mistake. But basically, they derived activity from a context. So context is a gut class that opens up access to systems and applications, resources and functionality and activity derives from it. And therefore, activity is also used 
as a gateway to systems and applications, resources, and functionality. Now, you should just understand that it's not its main responsibility. The main responsibility, the main goal is to be a window controller to handle the lifecycle. And that's pretty much it for this video. Activity is a top level window controller and its main responsibility is to integrate with Android framework through implementation of lifecycle methods. It's non-optimal to think about activities in terms of applications screens. Now you know how to think about activities and hopefully you learn something interesting from this video as well. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.